hi youtube family and welcome back to my channel thank you so much for the support that you have given me so far if you had watched my previous video if you haven't please go and check it out if you watched my previous video you would know that this one is supposed to be about money and financial literacy but as you can see from the title obviously it is not i have an entire series dedicated to this topic but i have been feeling the pressing need to do this now Okay, we'll just jump straight to the point. I have struggled with depression for about five years and obviously it's been on and off. And I used to be afraid to talk about this. I used to hide it. But now I think why not? Um, some things have been happening to me lately and I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. Now, this is not a sad video. This is not a pity party. I'm not even about to share the story because we're not ready to see any tears. But I've been doing a lot of thinking and honestly not much of anything else and I have come up with 10 things that I did that helped me cope with depression and I hope that this is going to be a safe space for anyone who is going through it and pretty much anybody who just wants to understand the entire dynamic of- I'm talking too much. <laughs> okay, let's get into the video. One was very difficult for me I didn't get help until about my fourth year and by that time it became extra necessary because it was getting worse and it was my friend who pushed me to go I was so scared but I can tell you fam that it was basically one of the best decisions I have ever made in my life I walked into the psychologist's office just sat there and narrated my entire life story to him and most of the answers that I had been trying to find for so many years she just listened to me in a few minutes assessed me and gave them to me because that is her job she's literally dedicated several years of her life to understand the inner workings of the human mind that is literally what a psychologist or a psychiatrist is for now i'm saying this because a lot of us have been trying to wing it and do this on our own and my best advice would be for you to get help i'm being serious I, for some reason, I think people don't think that there are avenues for psychotherapy in Ghana, and that's not true. And so I've been conducting some qualitative research recently for a certain project that I'm doing, and I have gathered a list of therapy centers, hospitals, and organizations that you can call up right now to help you, and they'll be up on my screen in a bit. thing is very important because you're going to get somebody who you can talk to somebody who won't judge you and someone who, who will make you feel like you're being an emotional burden and they are going to give you actual professional help i know this can be very difficult but trust me do take this step and do yourself a favor By the wrong people, I mean ignorant people. Now, I don't mean to sound harsh or anything, but once you take a step back and observe certain people that come your way, you begin to realize their pattern of thinking, their reaction to certain things, their cognitive biases. And once you begin to understand the way people are thinking, you will actually be very shocked. People who would say things like, and this is for the boys, oh, but you're a boy, so why are you depressed? Or you're a writer, right? So just pour your depression into your writing. Or A, hey, you that you are happy and hyper all the time, how can you be depressed? You don't look depressed. Depression does not come written on anybody's forehead. Now, once you begin to notice certain people like this in your life, maybe your friends or even your family, flee. Now, being very practical, you can't eliminate such people from your life. You know, the best thing that you can do maybe is to uh, limit the type of conversation that you have with these people. Try not to show your vulnerability to them because they could just use these opportunities as leverage to show you more of their ignorance. Try to surround yourself with a healthy supportive circle that would help you develop a healthy mind and better coping mechanisms and this leads me to my next point words can describe how grateful i am for having amazing people in my life i had friends that i could talk to friends whose shoulders i could cry on without any 
judgment and this played a huge role in my recovery especially last year i can't count how many times i had to pull my friend out of calculus class just when i was about to lose it the point i'm making here is that you can do this on your own it is advisable not to do this on your own friends and just a very good support circle of friends and family is scientifically proven to be a viable recipe for developing a healthier mind and better coping mechanisms and this leads me also to my next point which is a little funny well it's more like he dumped me and I was so angry at first, but if you think about it, who would want to continue dating somebody in need of actual help? It was a good fraction of my life and I don't regret it. And I, I believe it was a good learning experience for me. We were so young back then and so I'm just going to blame it on immaturity. But now I am in a loving, meaningful, caring, supportive, understanding relationship with the most beautiful person you will ever meet. And I'm not here to discuss my relationship or anything, but the point that I'm trying to drive home here is that relationships are a huge aspect of human life and existence, period. We as social creatures naturally crave love and acceptance in society. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. But if that part of your life is the antagonizing factor against your mental health, it's time to pack yourself and go. Now, it's easier said than done. Honestly, it was a very, very difficult um, time for me because at that time, it rather pushed me deeper in the fields of depression. But it was worth it. God removes people from your life for a reason. Depression in relationships in general is a very huge issue. And so either you get somebody who totally gets it, somebody who is mature and open-minded, or you just stay on your own and deal with yourself properly. I didn't jump into a relationship straight away. I had gone through several periods of growth and healing and now... Before I continue, please do like this video and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'm going to do a Q&A session in another video and I'm also going to be sharing some of your experiences so if you want to take part in this just send me your questions on Instagram and if you also want to share your experiences you can send me those on Instagram as well but if you want them to be anonymous I have put a link down below where you can come on there and then um, share your story with me and I wouldn't know your name or where you're from or anything like that Change of environment is a healthy thing for the human brain. I was blessed to receive a scholarship for a writing project in Sweden and that was around the time where I had started becoming better. My grades were bad, school was bad and so when this thing came I just told myself you know what the semester isn't ended yet but I'm gone and it was an amazing experience for me. I got to see new places, I met new people and I had the chance to ignite my writing passion again. It doesn't have to be a drastic change of environment such as going outside the country or moving out of your parents' home. It just has to be a change in your physical situation for a while. Maybe take yourself out on a solo date at the beach. Just take a day off of work or school and go outside. There is a lot of scientific research proving the effects of your environment on your mind and I'm going to link a couple of articles down in the description box below. If you know me well, you know that I am a workout junkie, or at least I'm trying to be. Kenneth and I used to challenge each other to work out sometimes, and he introduced me to this website called Derby, which I want to introduce to you guys. It has a lot of challenges and exercises that you can try out. So I used to sometimes go on jogs when I was in school, um, on the basketball course in front of my hostel, and I am obsessed with calisthenics. In fact, I might even do a separate video on developing abs because that's the only part of this whole workout thing that I really know how to do. People underestimate the power of a good workout, and um, exercise is very important for your brain because 
that is what is going to cause your brain to develop and release the few good chemicals that will make you happy and energized it could be a five to ten minute walk a day or you can step things up a notch by trying out some of the workouts on derby or you can also follow people like Chloe Ting. Not only will it help you boost your self-confidence, but your brain will thank you. Over the span of about one year, I have come to learn so much about myself and I've watched myself grow and I'm still growing. And a lot of us are scared to spend time alone and we rather spend our time with cliques and so-called friends, mainly because we don't know who we really are. But I can tell you that spending time alone is one of the best ways to love yourself and through that you can now extend that love onto other people. There's a very huge difference between aloneness and loneliness and it was in moments of abject loneliness that I came to understand the importance of aloneness and its role in shaping me. Two channels helped me do this. The first one is Einzelgänger, that is German for loner and the daily stoic. So through these channels, I came to learn the important principles and philosophies in, of aloneness and stoicism. So I came to learn about meditating on your mortality, the art of finding yourself while alone, amor fati. And these things may sound wishy-washy, but there's a reason they are important philosophies. One of the biggest questions that we ask ourselves, especially when we're depressed, is who am I? And one sure way to answer that is by spending time alone with yourself. Being on a spiritual path does not prevent you from facing times of darkness. However, it teaches you to use this darkness as a tool to grow. This is a quote I saw somewhere, it's not mine, but I don't know who said it. This topic in particular is a very difficult one for me because even as all of these things were going on, I had a very big fight with God. <laughs> and I was so angry about anything that had to do with spirituality, religion and whatnot. But interestingly, depression is what actually led me back to developing a spiritual life. I've come to notice that moments of depression serve as an opportunity for growth. And developing a spiritual life or being on a spiritual path also serves as an opportunity for growth. Now, human beings, the way in which we are wired, we kind of have to go through trying times to evolve, it seems. So if you marry these two things together, I think that it's a powerful combination that will help you for your growth. Okay, this is mostly a given when you're depressed anyway, but hear me out. This point is very important, especially for boys and men, because we don't allow ourselves to cry. And I guess it's, it's part of our socialization where we've been taught that crying is a sign of weakness, but this isn't true. Crying is a natural human thing to do. It activates the parasympathetic nervous system, which is basically the part of our nervous system that helps to soothe the body dull pain and give us peace and rest so go ahead and give yourself a good cry but like i say all the time we cry once twice three times and then we keep a gangster but even as i cried i still had to remind myself that this is yes i'm in pain but this is an important stage in my life and it is teaching me something and that helped me stop playing victim and also just generally helped me learn to forgive myself Taking out a book and writing down how I was feeling was a very therapeutic thing for me. I could lament all I wanted on a piece of paper without feeling the burden of being an emotional burden on somebody else. Journaling is a very good thing because it helps you track how you're feeling throughout the day or generally over a longer period of time because you can't really do that in your head. Maybe the last time you had a journal was in high school or way before that, but I would encourage you to just do that today or you can even use the notes app on your phone. It will give you an opportunity to give yourself some positive self-talk aside all the other benefits that I have mentioned. Thank you guys, this is the end of the video. It might have been really long, but I really hope that you stayed through with me till the end because this is a very very important topic 
do comment down below like and subscribe and also share with your friends and family and anybody that you think really needs this and i'll see you in the next video god bless i didn't get help until about the fourth year until about the fourth year and by that time honestly it was missed oh thank you so much to